All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at the uh, last phylum of animal biology, and we're looking at phylum chordata. Uh, it's actually broken down into a subphylum, which is called vertebrata, uh, which is the vertebrates. So what is a chordate? It's essentially just uh, anything that has these four things in common. So just jot down these characteristics and underline. You don't have to write all the detail. Hollow nerve cord, which essentially is the spinal cord nautocord which is the long supporting rod that runs through the body pharyngeal pouches and a muscular tail and these two here are essentially um, mostly just occurring at the embryotic uh, point but they did, do not carry on throughout um, adulthood so you can jot those down uh, so fish have three classes amphibians reptiles and birds and then mammals so you don't have to jot those ones down because we're going to be going through all of these individually so let's look at the uh, the, the fish. So the first one is to, this is just fish in general. Uh, the, the, there's going to be three classes. They are characteristics by fins, scales, and gills. No real surprises there. The gills bring in oxygen rich water and then they remove the oxygen poor water through gill slits. It uses a closed circulatory system which essentially means that it's enclosed in vessels just like that squid was, was to make it nice and efficient and it uses a two-chambered heart which is actually not very efficient and we'll talk about the difference between the chambers of the hearts when we get into class. Okay, so you can jot those down, pause it if you need to. Okay, so let's look at the groups of fish. These are classes, so class, you might want to jot that down in there, Agnatha. This is the first type of fish, it has no bones. Uh, lampreys and hagfish are example. Chondroichthys, which is essentially cartilage. Uh, this is where the skeleton is not made out of bone, it's made out of cartilage, like things like sharks and sea rays. And then finally, the last class, which is osteichthys. This is bones. So osteo, like osteoporosis. Uh, bony fish, carp, seahorse, perch, trout, salmon, every other type of fish, basically. Okay, so these are the three classes, Agnatha, Chondrichthys, and Osteichthys. So jot those ones down, and I'll, I'll show you what they look like here in a second. Okay, here they are. So lamprey looks like this, the jawless fish. It looks pretty nasty. Uh, Chondrichthys, so we have our shark, and we have our sea rays, and then we have our just our normal fish, uh, Osteichthys, which is a catfish there. Okay, amphibians, some basic facts. Amphibian means w, double life. They live in both water. They live in water as uh, larvae. And then once they get to be adults, they turn into terrestrial carnivores. So they use uh, respiration in larvae through skin and gills. And then when they get into adulthood, they um, differentiate into lungs. They're descendants of our uh, organisms that lived in water and made that transition into land. And they use external fertilization, which means that they deposit the sperm and the eggs outside of the female. And then finally, they use closed circulatory systems, like we've mentioned before in the fish. But this time, they have three chambered hearts for the most part. Uh, and like I said, we'll talk about what the differences in the chambers and efficiency in class. So pause that if you need to. Okay, so here's just a little visual of the different life cycle of a frog. As we know, it starts off as a tadpole. Uh, this is their infancy. They are water bound, which means that they are dependent on water, especially when they're uh, developing. And then once they turn into adults, they can now transition into land, but they're still tied to the water in terms of uh, needing to stay moist and for the reproduction. So groups of amphibians, uh, just you can generally just write down the different examples. You don't have to give details. Salamanders, frogs and toads, uh, Sicilians, which is basically legless animals that bury in the moistened soil. And I'll show you what they look like. They're kind of weird looking in a second. Uh, so there's a spotted sal salamander. Here's the Sicilian, and it kind of just looks like a, like a snake. Uh, poison dart frog, um, that's a pretty cool one. And the fired bellied toad. So basic facts on reptiles. These ones are the dry, scaly skin. Uh, they prevent water loss because of their dry environment. And they're terrestrial eggs. They don't have the amniotic sacs uh, surrounding them like the uh, water-dependent uh, amphibians. Uh, they respire using lungs only. Internal fertilization, which means that the uh, sperm is deposited inside the female. And then they uh, start developing and then they lay their eggs. They're ectotherms, which means they cannot regulate their body temperature. Uh, they are cold-blooded, another way to say that. Uh, so they cannot live in cold climates, and they need that sun in order to wa warm their bodies. So you can pause that there. Uh, it's essentially, they need to 
do um, behavioral characteristics in order to keep their body temperature consistent. Okay, so pause that. And lastly, uh, closed circulatory system again, and they have this uh, double loop. Uh, most have three chambers, but there are some uh, four chambered uh, hearts like in crocodiles. And we'll explain what the double loop in the chambers have to do in class tomorrow. Okay, groups of reptiles, just again, just as a, so you can see a couple different classifications. You don't have to uh, get any more detail on this. Lizards and snakes, uh, crocodiles and alligators are, are basically make up the reptiles. And turtles and tortoises, and then Tutatera, uh, primitive reptile found on some small remote islands. And here we are. So look at this little guy, the Tuatera. Sea turtles. Uh, this is a cool thing we mentioned in evolution on how some of the snakes uh, evolve sim similar uh, color characteristics as poisonous ones. Uh, so since this one's poisonous, some of the predators know that and they stay away from all sorts of these other organisms so they don't get killed. Now crocodile and the alligator. So birds, the second last one here, they're closely related to the reptiles. They have the scales on their legs. Uh, they have feathers, which is essentially going to be uh, separating them from all other animal species. Uh, they insulate for warmth and can generate their own body heat. Their bills and beaks are adapted, as we talked about in evolution, to the type of the food that they eat. Their highly efficient respiratory system, uh, in order to use oxygen-rich air, they have their four-chambered heart. So this is the first one that essentially all of them have four chambers uh, to keep the efficiency up. Internal fertilization, which means that the sperm is deposited inside the female, use amniotic eggs that are going to be uh, developing into the offspring. Uh, more than 30 order of birds, which means there is a lot, and here's just some examples. You have the perching birds, birds of prey, herons and relatives, ostriches and relatives, and we'll show you the birds of paradise video, which actually I think I've already seen, sh shown you in class, but uh, we can check it out again. And here are your examples. And then lastly, mammals. The first true mammals appeared a long time ago. Here are the characteristics that tie together mammals. Hair, mammary glands, produce milk. Lungs used um, to breathe air. Four-chambered hearts. Endotherms, which essentially means they can generate their own body heat. And they use internal fertilization. And the mothers are going to care for their young. And here they are. There's a bunch of mammals. Uh, some of the ones that you know of and some of the ones you don't. Uh, so some of the ones you might not have seen before, pangolins, manatees, uh, but there's all the rest. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, jot them down and bring them on into class. Have a fantastic day, and hopefully that didn't go too fast, but it probably did.